Throughout the entirety of the story of Sun Wukong and Journey to the West, those that can match the strength of the Great Sage equal to heaven are very few and far between. And it's a common theme throughout the entire novel of Wukong's power being extraordinary beyond the understanding of those he faces and those high above desperately seeking ways to bring Sun Wukong under control, and the majority of the time failing to do so. Although we do see Sun Wukong at times outsmarted or tricked into capture, when it comes to raw strength, power, and skill, there's really only one character who can truly call themselves his rival, that of course being the sacred divinity himself, or Long Shin. So today I'm partnering with Game Science to tell you all about the story of this legendary figure, who exactly he is, and his history with Sun Wukong to give you a better understanding of the game and the story at play. In the opening segment of Black Myth Wukong, we're treated to a very cinematic shot of Sun Wukong riding his somersault cloud out against an army of the Celestial Court, who have come to capture him and level his mountain. But when Wukong stands his ground and vocally defies their rule, one person comes forward to challenge him. And here we have our introduction to Erlong the Sacred Divinity. And he has a lot to say. Things such as, none other than me can challenge him to a duel, and I don't make a habit of fighting someone I've bested before. So immediately the game implies a lot of history between the two, and if you're familiar with the novel, you will understand that. However, if you're not, there's a lot to dig into here. The character of Erlong Shin has evolved a lot over the years, holding roots in Taoist religion and various local folklores. For the purposes of this video, we'll discuss his most common representation. Erlong Shin is frequently portrayed as a warrior of the Heavenly Court, characterized by his notorious third eye in the middle of his forehead, allowing him to see through deception and discern truth and righteousness. Other notable features include the celestial dog that accompanies him, along with his three-pronged spear. Erlong is a symbol of righteousness righteousness, wisdom, strength, and divine protection, and we see this reflected not only in Journey to the West, but also in the game. But much like Black Myth Wukong, our first introduction to Erlong in Journey to the West is when he is sent by the Celestial Court to go subdue Sun Wukong. Reading from Chapter 6 of Journey to the West, we have Erlong's introduction. After hearing about the Monkey King's rampage in heaven and his refusal to submit, the Jade Emperor was furious and convened a meeting with his ministers. The Elder Star suggested, Your Majesty, the Great Sage equal to heaven is indeed very powerful, and our celestial army has not been able to contain him. However, there is one who might be able to subdue him. His name is Erlong Shin, the second son of the Li family, a celestial being of extraordinary strength and skill. Hearing this, the Jade Emperor ordered that Erlong Shin be summoned at once. Erlong Shin, a warrior with a third eye upon his forehead, a golden helmet upon his head, and a three-pointed double-edged sword in hand, came forward, bowing to the Emperor. Nephew, the Jade Emperor addressed him, we call upon your strength to subdue the great sage who has brought chaos to heaven. Erlong Shin agreed to the task and descended with his six brothers and his celestial hound. As he arrived at Flower Fruit Mountain, where Sun Wukong was hiding, he called out, Rebellious monkey, come out and face me. Sun Wukong emerged from the mountain, clutching his golden staff and sneered. Who are you, daring to challenge the great sage? Erlong Shin smirked. I am Erlong Shin, known for my strength and wisdom. You have caused enough trouble in heaven and now I am here to bring you to justice. The two clashed in battle, their blows echoing like thunder through the heavens and the earth. Erlong Shin's third eye shone with a radiant light, allowing him to see through Sun Wukong's transformations, while Sun Wukong relied on his own powers of shapeshifting and agility to evade his opponent. The struggle continued fiercely, each matching the other's strength and neither willing to yield. So what we see here is that Erlong Shin is capable of battling on equal footing as Sun Wukong. But beyond that, the equality here goes beyond simply the hand-to-hand -hand combat, but it extends as well to their abilities, with Erlong wielding the same transformation powers as Sun Wukong, even potentially holding the edge in this regard, as his third eye allows him to see through Sun Wukong's transformations, which ultimately gives him the edge in their first battle. But the events we see in the game reference this battle, but tell an altogether different story not present in the novel because this was not the only time we see Erlong and Sun Wukong interact, and their second encounter is under very different circumstances. Reading from Chapter 63 of Journey to the West, Sun Wukong, unable to defeat the nine-headed insect, despite his best efforts, thought to himself, This demon is far too cunning and powerful. If I continue to fight alone, it will only endanger my master and my brothers. Perhaps it is time to seek help from someone equally formidable. With that thought, he rode a cloud straight to the abode of Erlong Shin, where he found the deity practicing archery with his six brothers. Upon seeing the Monkey King approach, Erlong Shin raised an eyebrow and smirked. Why has the 
great sage equal to heaven come to my door today? It has been many years since our last encounter. Have you come for a rematch? Sun Wukong bowed deeply and replied, I would not dare, great lord Erlong. This time I come in humility to seek your assistance. A fearsome demon, the nine-headed insect, has caused great trouble for me and my master during our journey. His powers surpass my own, and I fear that without your aid, we cannot subdue him. Erlong Shin looked down at the humbled Monkey King, and after a moment of silence, he laughed. Well, Monkey, it seems that you have learned a thing or two about humility since our last fight. Very well. I shall accompany you to face this demon. I've been looking for some sport to pass the time. With Erlong Shin's celestial hound at his side and his spear in hand, he leapt onto a cloud with Sun Wukong. Together they set off to the lair of the nine-headed insect, the winds roaring beneath them as they flew. When they arrived, Sun Wukong called out, Now, fiend, let us see how you fare against the combined strength of the Monkey King and Erlong Shin. The nine-headed insect, hearing this challenge, emerged from his lair, but upon seeing the two warriors together, he hesitated. With a fierce battle cry, Erlong Shin unleashed his celestial powers, while Sun Wukong attacked with renewed vigor. The two fought side by side, and even the nine-headed insect, with all his powers, could not withstand their might. So what this communicates to us is that despite the rivalry and constant butting of heads, Sun Wukong and Erlong Shin do hold each other in a respectful regard, the kind of respect that can only be gained in absolute equality. But now that we know the background, what does Black Myth Wukong communicate for Erlong's story in the game itself? Well, as we established, the game opens up with a battle between Sun Wukong and Erlong Shin, fighting alongside the army of the Celestial Court and the Four Heavenly Kings, as they've come to subjugate Mount Wagwo and capture Sun Wukong. The battle is ultimately decided after the Golden Circlet begins to constrict and weaken Sun Wukong, allowing Erlong to deliver the decisive blow and ultimately kill him. This begins the events of the game as the relics of Sun Wukong's senses are scattered across the land, and he returns to the stone egg atop the mountain, and the destined one begins his journey to retrieve those relics. We don't encounter Erlong again until the very end of the game, after completing all of the secret areas and stepping through a mural in the Great Pagoda. And upon our reunion, Erlong reveals some very interesting things. That he can't kill that monkey, no one but himself can, and at last he sees this is the only way. The tone of this encounter is not hostile at all. Erlong greets us actually kind of friendly. As the fight goes on, he talks to us in a way more reminiscent of two training partners than a fight to the death between enemies actually encouraging the destined one and saying things such as was our fight here all part of his plan all along implying that he knows more than we do saying other things such as i've thought about him every day since that battle and after we beat erlong here he powers us up into a strong transformation of a giant stone monkey continuing the battle in these monstrous forms but something very interesting happens here the battle attracts the presence of the four heavenly kings however unlike at the beginning of the game rather than assist them in capturing the destined one erlong Erlong sits on the sidelines of the fight and doesn't intervene as we take them out one by one. And after the four heavenly kings are dispatched, a final battle with Erlong ensues. But aside from being an absolutely outstanding gameplay moment, it's at this point that Erlong realizes the destined one can actually live up to Sun Wukong's legacy. But once Erlong is truly defeated, that's when the truth is revealed. And as the destined one goes to put an end to him, we learn that Erlong was actually holding on to all of Sun Wukong's memories, waiting for one who could actually defeat him and be worthy of inheriting them. Erlong then tells the destined one, my brothers tested you all for this day, and only now do I understand that fight. You see, Erlong was the final step in Sun Wukong's true resurrection. You have to beat him in order to get the true ending of the game. And whether Erlong was knowingly part of the plan, or fell into the steps naturally, his actions led to what Wukong truly wanted. And upon realizing this, Erlong finds peace in it all, able to finally come to grips with having killed the person he respected the most. And he sends the destined one away with the message of, may you not fail him. Erlong Shin and Sun Wukong are two sides of the same coin, both possessing unparalleled strength, while Sun Wukong represents freedom, chaotic desire, and fierce loyalty to his kind, Erlong wields his strength orderly. While he still obeys the decrees of the Celestial Court, he's able to recognize the merits in Wukong, who has been deemed an outsider, whether that was deserved or not. But I really like the way they chose to portray Erlong in this game, with complex motives, an arc that leaves you thinking, rather than just a bitter rival. But what do you think about Erlong Shin? Did you enjoy his story in Black Myth Wukong? Let me know down in the comments section below. Either way, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like on it. And once again, big shout out to Game Science for partnering with the channel. But with all that, I will catch you in the next one.